We're Lottie and Margaret, and we love e-bikes, camper vans, and cats. We bought and built our last home for $6,000 US dollars, but now stuck in a tiny village in the middle of nowhere, Czech Republic, we've decided to build ourselves an upgrade. With the help of some 3D printers and the Ultimate Workshop, we're building out a modern luxury van for full-time living and travel. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to watch the progress. Ready, Millie? Today's build video is sponsored by Omaze. Make sure to go to omaze.com slash Lottie for your chance to win a 4x4 Mercedes Sprinter van. But more on that in a little bit. We got some building to do. We sold our last van a few months into the pandemic and we have been searching absolutely everywhere for our new home. This time we decided to go full on with one kilowatt tiltable solar on a roof, around 13 kilowatt hour lithium batteries to have a proper power station for our e-bikes, integrated 3D printer, bed lift, convertible shower space. It's gonna be really interesting. Lottie also didn't mention how many Milly customizations are going to be in this van. So everybody out there who has pets, get excited. <laughs> I just like can't believe it's ours. <laughs> this is like way bigger than I thought we would do. We bought a Ducato, a 2015 Fiat Ducato. This is L5H3, which is so much bigger than what we wanted. It came with 170,000 kilometers, which I think is like 100,000 miles. Um, and it was a courier van, so it was all like mail packaging. Our goal for this entire conversion is to keep it under 20,000 USD. Like, biggest and the tallest van. <laughs> I, I thought this would be what we retire in. And these Ducatos, Citroëns, and Peugeot's, these are the bo boxiest shapes because this is just <laughs> ultimate box, the biggest possible van you can have. We are going to track every single expense for this entire van and we're going to put it on like a public tracking document which we'll link in the description. And that will help community also to resource the same parts. There's still obviously a lot of things that are imperfect about this van um, that we'll need to fix first. So there's a lot that we need to do. That's why it was at a good price. We need to do a proper deep clean of this thing. Ooh. We haven't decided what color we want to paint the van yet, but we know that it won't include the DPD stickers, so I'll be taking off stickers. While Margaret is taking care of that, I need to prep the van for technical inspection by fixing the seat belt that's not working since we bought it. Ready and Let's break. do it. We were able to get all the writing off pretty easy, these black and gray stickers, but the red one, the red one is seriously the devil. We want to do something a little bit different because we were planning to keep these van for longer. I want to make sure everything is properly treated against rust. 
Wow, this definitely needs a custom tool. I'm gonna just uh, brush it off a little bit and paint it again. With a lot of these paneled cargo vans, they have these bumpers that go over the side and towards the back, and they come with these little plastic poppets. But what happens is the rainwater and the moisture goes between those panels into the hole where the poppets are and brings water into the van. And it starts rusting in a place that you just can't get to easily, especially if you're doing a conversion. So I'm going in there, scrape it, properly prime it, and make sure this van lasts ages. Yeah, there is definitely a layer of dust that I was not able to vacuum and I'm gonna wipe it off so the hammerite sticks, sticks to the metal uh, very nicely and I'm very happy that I found this leftover hammerite in here because that's gonna be a good treatment for the following years. So here's the initial setup for all the noise deadening treatment. We're really excited about this because this is like a little torture being in a van driving around when it's this loud. My friend Richie came to help us out, give us a hand. We are just cutting sides and gluing them straight to the metal parts of the van. It's really important to stick these well, otherwise it loses the entire purpose. So they even sell these rollers, and uh, me as a cabinet maker, we use these for laminating surfaces on a, uh, on a furniture. So that's exactly the same purpose. So this panel vibrates a lot. This is, I think, the back door vibrates the most overall of these panels inside. And look at that, it even vibrates off from that glue. And there is like even extra bigger surface with no support. Come to take a look. I use this mammoth glue and I have this little trick that I always squeeze it and make it a narrow nozzle, right? And then I can push it in, into that gap and I can glue all of that around to make it solid one surface and glue it again. I'm gonna just add that extra mammoth and when I see it's loose, I can just add extra and then close it off and know everything is secure. I'm absolutely thrilled about <laughs> it. Look at this difference. I'm so surprised how big difference it makes. I'm working on the sticker of death 
It's like roughly day one million. And uh, this is terrible. I don't want to do these stickers anymore. The black ones were much easier, but this is like so micro and it's super hard to peel off and it gets stuck and it doesn't expand. This is so. like a proper torture. Never ending. We should have asked for a discount because of having to deal with these stickers. We'll start executing all these tasks by our priorities. That meaning, we want to make sure nothing rattles, meaning fixing the back door. Yeah, because of this crack, it's loud as hell. So one of the first things I need to do, I need to support this extra piece of metal, weld it in and support this thing. This is always the weak point because this is so long, such a tall doors, that as they close it and open, it just cracks. out it from metal, longer strip like this, and same thing on the other side, and weld it on. That's gonna be good support enough. Recently Lottie got a welder, and he's been taking every opportunity to use it, so I think he was secretly excited that there was a crack. And I'm just cutting these tiny little plates to have them as a support from both sides of the door. I don't even mind it's gonna be a little bit thicker because the rubber seal is gonna cover it anyways. the van up nice close and personal this is an ugly little bugger I know a man that can do it who more how do I even execute this can you explain what you're doing oh everybody knows what I'm doing Ladies and gentlemen, follow my thought process. Here it is. <laughs> I have one extra long plank that is a little bit longer, right? Mm -hmm. So I need to spring it against my crack because the entire door is a little bit pushed in yeah. as it collapsed. When I close it now, I know it's nice and flush with this. Yeah. We're online. Later, I'll just use a body filler with a with a fibers to cover and smoothen out a little bit. And after, I'll just use a fine body kit. Definitely don't want to be sending too much of this stuff. <laughs> These are weak points, and I know they would crack again. So this is after fine body kit. So this is just a quick treatment for following few days before we do the overall paint mm -hmm. so it doesn't rust here next time with Lottie and Margaret <laughs> <laughs> it's all good vibes honey I'm building my house I'm being distracted mm -hmm.